the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax Products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. I think you'll agree that few things do more for a home than richly wax-polished floors. And yet, can you think of any beauty treatment that costs less? Why, a gleaming carpet of genuine Johnson's wax costs only a few pennies. And besides being inexpensive, beautifully wax-polished floors are so easy to have. Just apply a little Johnson's wax, buff, and right away your floors have that mellow, protective sheen that all the world admires. You know, surfaces protected with genuine Johnson's Wax are hard, smooth, and dry. They need only a light dusting to keep them bright. If you want long-lasting beauty, always insist on genuine Johnson's Wax, paste or liquid, in that familiar red and yellow package. There's no finer wax polish to bring out the beauty of the home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. When you've been married as long as Mrs. McGee has to Mr. McGee, and he goes around with an expression on his face like butter wouldn't melt in his hot little head, you don't have to shake his coat to know he has something up his sleeve. Well, let's see what it is as we join Fibber McGee and Molly. All right, sweetheart, I give up. What is it? What's what? Now, don't be coy, dearie. Tell Mother your little secret. Well, I've arranged a little surprise for you, Tootsie. You know what day this is? Yes, but I don't know that it has any special significance. (laughs) Unless uh, Mr. Bashinsky has sent an orchid to Mr. Winchell. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. So you don't know, eh? No. Gee whiz, Molly, have you forgot October 7th, 1917? The day I took you to your first big football game? The one I played in? Oh, for goodness sakes, was that the... Is this the anniversary? Well, heavenly days. You know, I've still got the chrysanthemum you gave me that day. Yeah. And it's as fresh today as it was then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you hang on to it, kiddo. You can't buy them good paper ones anymore. <laughs> Boy, what a football game that was. Well, it was very sweet of you to remember the anniversary. But my goodness, you shouldn't have gone and bought me a present. <laughs> What is it? What'd you buy? Can I see it? Oh, well, it isn't so much exactly a present so much exactly as it is, a, well, a kind of a something for both of us, you might say. <laughs> something we need for the home. Well, that takes in plenty of territory. Now, you just relax, Snooky. They're going to deliver it this afternoon. And... Oh, maybe that's the delivery man now. Oh. Come in. Nope, that's just the old-timer. Hi, old-timer. Glad to see you. Hello there, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Old-timer. We haven't seen you for quite a while. Well, I had to skip town for a while, daughter. The heat was on. The heat was on? You in a jam with the law or something? No, it was just the heat this summer, Johnny. Oh. 99 in the shade, the only place I could get cool was at the movies. Seen so many Donald Ducks, I started to walk with a waddle. <laughs> so I beat it out of town. Went out west, up in the mountains. Rocky Mountains? You said it, daughter. Ain't seen so many hairpin turns since my bald-headed sister got dressed for the opera. <laughs> Mighty pretty scenery up in them mountains. Mighty sightly country. (laughs) So they say, (laughs) old-timer, though I can't take it myself. The air is so much like wine, it gives me the hiccups. Well, (laughs) it's pretty wonderful, isn't it? Yes, sir. You ever see the sun come up over Lake Louise, creeping across the horizon like a Florida orange, sneaking over the California line? (laughs) Painting the lake all pink and gold like a Spanish omelet with cranberry sauce? <laughs> no, we never have. Me neither. I'm a late sleeper myself. <laughs> Had a job on a ranch out there for a while up near that state park, uh, Yosemite. <laughs> no, not Yosemite, old-timer. That's pronounced Yosemite. What kind of work were you doing? Removing stumps. With a bulldozer? Nope, with dynamity. <clears throat> Well, that must have been a nice job for the summer. Oh, I didn't stay with it long, Johnny. Went to San Francisco and got a job writing radio commercials. 
for rhythm chewing tobacco. Rhythm chewing tobacco? Well, that was something you could really get your teeth into, wasn't it? <laughs> yep, wrote one dandy commercial for the rhythm company. Went like this. If you're chewing in tune, you never miss the spittoon. <laughs> Yes, if you're chewing in tune, you never miss the spittoon. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Old timer. <laughs> if you expect to write as a copywriter, you can't expect to write copy like that. <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> the way I heard it, one feller says to tell the feller, say, he says... I see where Congress may stay in session all winter this year. Is that so, says Tully Feller. Lots of work to do? Nope, says the first feller. Scared to go home. <laughs> well, see you next. Billy Mills in the orchestra and the lady from 29 Palms. It's almost 2 o'clock. Are you sure they're going to deliver that this afternoon? Deliver what? Oh, the surprise sure. for the home. Yeah, sure, sure. They'll deliver today. Now, you just relax, Phil. Relax, the man says. Yes, sir. Heavenly days, how can I relax when I'm so excited? Huh? If I could turn my emotions off and on like that, I'd be doing soap operas. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Well, I always was one for the unexpected, Phil. You know, I'm always a... Now, that was unexpected. Come in. Come in. Well, my goodness, Dr. Gamble. Oh, it's so nice to see you, Doctor. Thank you, my dear. It's nice to see you. And good day to you, too, my boy. Hi, body patcher. <laughs> Throw that bag of suet you walked upstairs and saved $10 on into a chair and bring us up to date. On what, Droopy? On yourself, Doctor. What's new in the world of medicine these days? Yeah, you up on the latest scientific developments, Doc, or don't you take the Reader's Digest? <laughs> I never read any of the pocket magazines, Sonny. My pockets are so dark, it strains my eyes. <laughs> By the way, Molly, you look very happy today. Oh, I am happy, Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Why shouldn't she be happy? She's got a husband who treats her like a queen, full of thoughtful little gestures, remembers anniversaries and things like that there. This, for instance, Doctor, is the anniversary of the first time he ever took me to a football game. And he remembered it. That's me, just a sentimental fool. Well, I'm glad you told me. I'll change your record when I get back to the office. I'll erase the darn and put in sentimental. <laughs> now, I tell you, it was a great football game he took me to, Doctor. He played in it. He was the uh, drawback or uh, setback. Uh, halfback. Halfback. <laughs> halfback. Third string. Substitute. <laughs> 
The coach saved me for the big Thanksgiving game that year. Well, sir, it was the final quarter. Peoria versus Joliet with the score tied. The fans were going wild, yelling for a touchdown. I leaps off uh, the bench. Tell me some other time, shortening bread. I have some very Oh, now important... you ought to hear this, doctor. Tell him, dearie. I will. <laughs> well, sir, I leaps off the bench and runs up to the coach. Put me in, coach, I says. He slaps me on the shoulder and says, kind of quiet like, he says, go back and sit down, fathead. <laughs> And just then, Joliet makes another touchdown with a double wingback formation and a Statue of Liberty play with the left tackle playing defensive on a concealed pass to the right forward. It was crucial. I tell you, I was so excited, I started to eat my pennant and, and uh, wave my hot dog. Uh-huh. Then the coach calls me over. All right, McGee, he says. Get in there and win this football game. I throws off my raccoon coat, runs over to the cameraman, poses for a few pictures, and trots out onto the field. The crowd screamed. But he went out anyway. <laughs> okay, men, I says, we'll give him the old shoestring play. That's very logical. I don't know anyone with older shoestrings than yours. <laughs> well, sir, after the next play, I drifted over to the sidelines and made like I was tying my shoestrings. The opposition team never noticed me. The ball went into play. The captain sn snaps me a long pass. I leaps into the air, grabs the ball, and takes off for the goal line. Like a bullet. So, what happened, if anything? I got a bad break, Doc. I was so excited, I'd accidentally tied my shoestrings together. <laughs> the first step I took, I went neck over elbow, and by the time I stopped bouncing, I was clear out in the parking lot. <laughs> they wouldn't let me back in without a ticket, so I grabbed a taxi and went home. <laughs> He was the dog of the town for three weeks after that, Doctor, and I must say you never heard such language. Yes, it's always the little cusses that inspire the big cusses. <laughs> I remember one time when... That's probably for you, Doctor. Probably. I have my office nurse phone me every hour wherever I am. Gets me out of some very dull parties. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Hello, Dr. Gamble speaking. Dr. Who? The hospital? Oh, I'm sorry to hear it. I didn't foresee anything like that. I, uh, I'll be right over. Yes, goodbye. Bad news, doctor? I'm afraid so. We just lost a patient. Oh. Oh, my gosh, doc, that's too bad. What happened? He got well. But <laughs> that's the breaks of the game, kids. See you later. <laughs> Isn't he a sweet old character? He's old and he's a character, but hey, what time is it? About half past. Why? Well, that delivery I was expecting. You, you, you're surprised, you know. I was just thinking that... Hello, Molly. Hiya, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. Come on in and wish us a happy anniversary. Anniversary? Well, congratulations. How long have you been married? What that got to do with it? <laughs> I thought you said this was your anniversary. Well, it is. Himself here took me to my first football game, October 7th, 1917. Isn't he wonderful? I'll bet you don't remember the first big date you ever had, Mr. Wilcox. Oh, yes, I do. It was 1916 on Friday the 12th at 3.22 in the afternoon in Omaha. Wow. I remember the exact time because I had just put my wristwatch back in my pocket. Strap busted? No, but wristwatches were new then for men, and I didn't want Frida to think I was a sissy, even though I was the best wrestler in Benson High School. Who said so? Frida and the other girls. <laughs> Anyway, there we were in the parlor, dancing to the radio. Hey, now, well, 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 wait a minute. They didn't have radios in 1916. No, Frida did. Her father was rich. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, it was awfully quiet in the house, and I was afraid Frida would try to kiss me. Mm -hmm. You see, she was a vamp. A what, Junior? A vamp. We called them vamps then. Oh. I was a chic. Oh. Anyway, I said, where's your mother today, Frida? And she said, Mama's out scrubbing the kitchen floor. Scrubbing, I said. You mean she doesn't know about Johnson's glow coat? <laughs> Did they have glow coat in 1916? Don't change the subject, Molly. <laughs> well, I dropped Frida like a hot potato. And don't think she wasn't. <laughs> and I... <laughs> and I dashed out into the kitchen, and there was Frida's mother on her knees scrubbing the linoleum. How horrible. It's the last, last half of the ninth, folks. No scores yet, and the base is loaded. Wilcox on the mound. He's winding up. And here comes the pitch. Well, for 15 minutes, I stood... <laughs> I stood there telling Frida's mother about Johnson's self-polishing glow coat, how it's so easy to use, how you just pour a little out and spread it around, let it dry in 20 minutes or less to a brilliant protective gloss. 
How it shines as it dries, with no rubbing or buffing. How it brings out the beauty and color of the linoleum and makes spilled things so easy to wipe up. I bet she was really grateful, Mr. Wilcox. Nope. She told me to mind my own business and chased me out of the house. But Frida told me later that she always used glow coat after that. Oh, then you did see Frida again. Yes, yes. When I was in uniform. She came to the station to see me off. In uniform? I were your Navy, Mr. Wilcox. Scoutmaster. I was taking a bunch of kids to camp. <laughs> well, happy anniversary, folks. Hey, I got an idea, Molly. While we're waiting for him to deliver that little surprise, why don't we duck downtown to a movie? Well, it seems a little extravagant, but we might as well spend our money while a dollar is still worth 15 cents. Uh, what's showing at the Bijou? That's what I want to find out. Mother wore tights is playing there. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'll be with you just as soon as I put on my face and get my hat. Here. Okay, Tootsie. Ah, there goes a good kid. And does she ever love surprises? And am I ever full of them? <laughs> you think she'd learn after a while that none of them ever amount to much, but no, she's always Jerry. Come in, come in, come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hi, Teeny. <laughs> well, I'm glad to see you, but we were just going out. Mrs. McGee and I are going to a movie. Oh, uh, well, there's a dandy one at the Princess, mister. It's sail bad the center, and it's all in ticklish color, and they say hey, it's... Hey, hey. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hmm? It's not Sail Bad the Sinner, it's Sinbad the Sailor. Okay. Anyway, it's a dandy picture, I bet you. I and Willie Toops went to it. No, no, no. Willie Toops and I went to it. When? Huh? When did you and Willie go to it? <laughs> he said he hadn't seen it before. I when... didn't go with Willie Toops. I was merely correcting your grammar. You said I and Willie Toops, and that's incorrect. It's Willie Toops and I. <laughs> The first person singular takes the object in the possessive tense if the participle is part of the predicate. <laughs> you understand? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was a peachy picture, I bet you. It was, eh? Yeah. Willie and I... Hmm? I said it was, eh? Was what? A good picture. Where? At the princess, the one you and Willie went to. I know it. Well? That's the same one you and Willie went to. <laughs> I didn't go to the picture with Willie. You did too, I bet you. No. You said you and Willie went to see Sail Bad the Sinner. I didn't say any such a thing. I never said I never saw Sail Bad the Sinner. And if I had, I, if I had, I wouldn't have gone with Willie Toops. I think he's a dreadful little pest. Please, Mr. McGee. Well, you are speaking of the man I love. <laughs> I and Willie are engaged. There you go again, sis. You mean Willie and I are? In... No, no, no. That would be. <laughs> He gave me an engagement ring, too, I bet you. Oh, say, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful ring, Deanie. Sure it is, I bet you. Hmm. It's pure silver. Really? Pure silver? Mm -hmm, sure. Mm -hmm. He got it in a box of Cracker Jacks. <laughs> he said if the prize was a whistle, we'd play cops and robbers, and if it was a ring, we'd get engaged. Huh. And it was a ring, and boy, was Willie ever burned up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He wanted to play cops and robbers. <laughs> Goodbye now. Goodbye, Stevie. The Kingsmen and Freedom Train. This song is a train song. It's a song about a train. Not the Atchison, Topeka. Not the Chattanooga, Choo Choo. Not the train that leaves at midnight for the state of Alabama. This song is a train song where the engineer is Uncle Sam. Here comes that freedom train. You better hurry down. Just like a Paul Revere, it's coming into your hometown. Inside that freedom train, you'll find a precious freight. Those words of liberty, the documents that made us great. You can shout your anger from a steeple. You can shoot the system full of holes. You can always question we the people. You can get your answer at the polls. That's how it's always been and how it will remain. As long as all of us keep riding on the freedom train. Riding on the Freedom Train. I hear that Freedom Train is coming to Wistful Vista, Molly. That's something I want to see. Oh, me too, McGee. 
Imagine seeing the original Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and everything. Yeah. It's kind of easy to forget the things that made this a great country and sort of take things for granted. Oh, isn't the Freedom Train a wonderful name for it? Yeah. I just hope they watch the danger signals and keep it on the right track. Well, the crew is made up of people like you and me, dearie, so it's up to us. That's how it's always been and how it will that picture, McGee, that crossfire. Yeah. Isn't that Bob Ryan wonderful? Oh, he's okay if you like that type. Tall, handsome, curly-haired, rugged, and built like an athlete. <laughs> oh, he's such a fine actor, too. He had me simply scared to death. Ah, my gosh, I could have played that role just as well myself if I had all his talent. <laughs> just because he... Oh, hey, look who's coming. It's that Williams guy. Williams? Yeah. Well, the man Dr. Gamble introduced us to in the bank. Yeah. I thought he was a very pleasant... Ah, good day, Mr. Williams. What? Oh. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. McCabe? Uh, McGee is the name, Williams, remember? We met you in the bank with Doc Gamble the other day. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, McGee. <laughs> Lovely day, isn't it? Yeah. Except that it's a little cool. Although at this time of year, I suppose we must expect a little cool weather. Except that we sometimes get quite a hot spell during our Indian summer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> pardon me for mentioning Indian summer... I didn't intend to inject a racial note into the discussion. Well, that's quite all right, Mr. Williams. We're not Indians. <laughs> not American Indians, anyway. I'm more of an East Indian. Spent several years in Indochina. Used to travel through the jungle barefooted, buying lumber. Bought a lot of teak wood from a Chinese fellow named Chan. The natives all called me the barefoot boy with teak of Chan. <laughs> You get it, Williams? Cheek of Chan? Teak of Chan? It's a play on words involving a pun on the word cheek. Ain't funny, of... McGee. Oh, it ain't. <laughs> My gosh, I lay awake for two hours last night working on that. Mm. I rather enjoyed it myself. Well, thanks. I agree that a pun is sometimes the lowest form of humor, but on the other hand, a clever play on words I find rather amusing. Yeah? In other terms, while I detest puns, I sometimes like them very much. <laughs> I uh, see. Yeah. You live in Wistful Vista, Mr. Williams? Yes, yes, I do, Mrs. McGee. That is, I say I do. Although, to be strictly truthful, I live just outside of town. I suppose paying taxes here makes me a resident, but on the other hand, I consider myself, by reason of being a suburbanite, not a city dweller. <laughs> you sure hate to commit yourself, don't you, son? <laughs> You in business here? Well, you might say I am. And again, I'd hardly call it being in business. I see. Yeah. I, uh, I suppose I might be called a professional man. Although some people might find technical objections to the term, I work for the government, in a way. Oh. <laughs> but more strictly speaking, I am a local employee. Uh, doing what, may we ask? Oh, certainly. I am a meteorologist, otherwise known as the weatherman. Oh. Well, nice to have seen you again. Good day. Probably. <laughs> so he's the weatherman. No wonder he won't give you a positive tr statement. <laughs> well, I suppose you can't help. Oh, look, McGee, we're almost home. Why don't you uh, tell me what my surprise is? Now, you know I've been very patient And about spoil it. the whole build-up? Nothing doing, Snooky. Besides, it isn't too exciting. Just a little something I planned on doing for a long time. Oh, hey. There's Wally Wimple. Hi, Wimple, man. Hello there, Mr. Wimple. Hello, folks. <laughs> Been out for a stroll? Been to a movie to kill time, Wimp. I cooked up a little surprise for my wife, and we didn't want to stick around home. Well, now, isn't that a coincidence? I've cooked up a little surprise for Sweetie Face, too. Yeah? That's my big old wife. You know. Yes, we know. What you got planned, Wimp? Something romantic? <laughs> well, I, I'd hardly say that, Mr. <laughs> McGee. You see, this is Sweetie Face's birthday, so I wrote a little poem for him. Oh. I'm going downtown now and have it printed. Well, isn't that sweet? I'd forgotten you were a poet, Mr. Wimple. How does the poem go? Yes, recite it, Wimp. All righty. It goes <clears throat> to Sweetie Face on her birthday. 
You're 38 today, my dear, and in the very prime of life, as beautiful to me right now as when you first became my wife. How darling. That isn't all, Mrs. McGee. It goes on. <laughs> <laughs> like this. I thought of buying you champagne, but gave that up because I'd hate to spend an evening running round with a great big loaded 38. <laughs> Great little couple, him and Sweetie Face. Well, come on, kiddo. Let's just go this way. Well, why, McGee? Why must we go around through the alley? Well, the delivery men may be in the driveway, and I don't want you to see the surprise till it's all set. Yes, see? but I don't know oh, why. Oh, look. There's a delivery truck in the driveway right now. My gosh, I timed this just about perfect. Come on, baby. Uh, but, dearie, that's a coal truck. That wouldn't be what... <laughs> McGee, what on earth are you... <laughs> that's the surprise, kiddo. <laughs> Enough coal to last all winter. <laughs> And I remember to order it before we even needed it. Pretty thoughtful, eh? Remember how I forgot to order coal last year and we almost froze to death? <laughs> yeah, but McGee, now, I can't... How much more, Joe? That's the last of it, Mr. McGee. Three truckloads. How do I ask his own winner? Great. Great. Much obliged, Joe. Well, how's about it, Molly? Pretty swell idea, huh? Uh, yes, uh, but I... Well, if I'd only known what you... Oh, dear. Hey, now, you're not disappointed, are you? Gee whiz, I said it wasn't much, but we needed it. No, and... no, dearie, I'm not disappointed oh, about that. It's only that, well, I had a little surprise for you, too, and now I can't show it to you. You did? You can't? Well, why not? What was it? Well, I know how you hate to shovel coal and fire the furnace. Uh -huh. uh, so while you were fishing last week, I, well, I, I had a man come and change the furnace over to an oil burner. <laughs> You did? I'll show it to you next spring. It's buried under the coal now. Uh -huh. Bibber and Molly return in just a moment. Tell me, have you noticed that the Johnson's glow coat you've been buying lately gives your kitchen linoleum an unusually bright shine? Well, now, you're not just imagining things. Fact is, the glow coat on your dealer's shelf today gives you nearly twice as much shine as before. And that means nearly twice the shine for all linoleum and other floors in your home. You'll say you've never seen your kitchen floor so bright. Its color is so fresh and gay. Of course, Johnson's self-polishing glow coat is as easy as ever to use. Still no rubbing or buffing. And you still get that wonderful wax protection. Suppose you do happen to spill something on that wonderfully bright glow coat shine. Never mind, just wipe, wipe it with a damp cloth and your floor is as clean and nice as before. Yes, glow coat saves you hours of work. And it saves you money because it actually makes linoleum last years longer. Ask your dealer for brighter than ever Johnson's self-polishing glow coat to bring out the beauty of the home. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of the home. Ladies and gentlemen, it's nice to be back on NBC for Johnson's Wax for another season, and we hope you all enjoyed Fred Waring's wonderful music this summer. Well, we certainly did. You know, Fred's on a different night now, McGee, with a new show, Monday Nights for General Electric. General Electric, eh? Well, I'll tune that in. I like to keep up with all the current programs. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you hear me, Molly? I says I like to... Yeah, I heard you, dearie. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not the only one. Oh, oh, you mean they... Oh, Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.